Yes, we know that they have delivered on the promise not to run a family and friends government by practicing nepotism on an unparalleled scale, thereby becoming the most nepotistic government ever in the history of Ghana, and I dare stay in the history of the world. The tag friends and um, family originated from the NDC. You recall that Honorable Alvin Babin, MP for Nadolio Kalio, revealed how Mohammed's government was not that of the NDC, but his friends and family. So you can see the issue of uh, nepotism, it's a concern for both the NDC and the MPP who uh, typically will be at each other's uh, throat over who said this or who said that or who began this. It's usually uh, the case that we get to hear all the parties raise issues and blame each other, you know, but never acknowledging uh, anything. But we're, we're this morning we're going to get on to uh, Zoom right now and speak with Vitus Azim. Later on, uh, we will get a private legal practitioner joining us in the studio to explore further some of the dimensions. So, uh, Mr. Azim, thanks very much for joining us. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Great, great, great. So, so I want to hear from, from you uh, whether you get a sense that it is possible to have elected government officials take away their families and cronies from, from, from the governance chain, really. I think when there's a determination, when you have people that see that it is wrong for them to do that, then it's a possibility. It can happen. You are elected president of the country. It's not your wife. It's not your children. It's not your family. You must first admit that and let them understand that. That it is not running a country is not a private business. When you yourself believe in it and you let your family and friends understand that, then it is possible. But then why you yourself see it as this is my opportunity. This is the right time for me to bring my family up bring my children up to them. When I'm not there, they will be okay with themselves. Then, of course, it's not possible. So, so Mr. Azim, I want to find out uh, from you, really, if the person is qualified, should it be a problem? I mean, we have the, the president expressly saying, uh, in a video we'll play very shortly, that if the family member is qualified, it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm asking you, if the, a member of the executive, the family member, is qualified for any government business, should, should we worry? We should be worried. Because, one, what is the basis of the, 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 the assertion that the fellow is qualified? Political appointments do not go through interviews. They do, they do not go to regional exams. So when you say the person is qualified, ask yourself, what was the person doing before you think that he's qualified for a certain position? Where was that person? How successful was that person in the role in which the person played, played before you decided to bring him into government? Right, Mr. Azim, let's hold on. Let's hold on briefly, Mr. Azim. Mr. Azim, let's hold on briefly so that we can hear uh, the president's statement on this, uh, which expressly will actually put it in context uh, for the discussion. Right, uh, so uh, we'll get back to that later. But I have Bobby Banson, private legal practitioner, joining us in the studio. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Stephen. I'm good. Yeah. So this is question of nepotism. Should we be having it in a legal context? For example, that if the president is appointed, is elected as a president and he has a family member who has expertise in particular areas who perhaps by themselves uh, have qualified to be able to conduct that business, should we have any questions about this? Of course, uh, we should have questions because you, you said a legal discussion because the 1992 constitution actually makes room that uh, in situations where there's a likelihood of conflict of interest, people have a right to raise those issues. And so the reason why we are saying nepotism is that you realize that in that circle, there's a possibility of people putting family interest mm. above public interest, personal so you're, interest. You're, you're not going to say that those who are 
raising these concerns are necessarily against the government, like opposition elements of the NDC mm. are making quite a lot of noise about this. But we shouldn't see them as enemies, should we? No, no, no. I mean, any person who thinks that if uh, somebody raises an issue of a likelihood of conflict of interest is making noise, that person is, has a problem because it's something that is provided for in the 1992 constitution. It's not only actual conflict of interest, but the likelihood or the optics, the look, the possibility of a conflict of interest. And like uh, Mr. Axim said, it is not a subjective test. It is an objective test. Mm -hmm. Do third party bystanders looking at the circumstances of the case, think that this person has been put in this position solely because of his relationship with the person who has the power to make the appointment? Or is it that the person has, was picked up when every other person of the same standing was given equal opportunity? These are questions that people must ask. And, and these, these, these ask, usually it's not don't, nice. don't happen. They don't give everyone the equal opportunity and by if, the time. Well, so I'm let's sure quickly take the... The, the president uh, making uh, that statement uh, that it will put our discussion into context. This is your election command center. I am not provide, presiding over a, a government of family and friends. Yes, there are two, two, one or two members of my family in the, in the thing. Mr. Ferreta, who is the minister for finance, is my cousin. He happened also at the time to have been the person responsible for the MPP fundraising drive. Nobody made any criticism of him when he was in that position. And I don't think it's so difficult for somebody who has been the fundraiser to transform it, to transition into uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, uh, a finance minister. And apart from everything else, as far as I'm concerned, he's amazingly capable. And he's not there because he's my cousin, because he's there because he is a very capable man. That's very interesting. But let me come to you, Ms. Azim. The, the president, what he said, very short, but it's very instructive. He raises questions of why people didn't have any concerns when his cousin was actively raising funds for the party ahead of the elections and they won and he's playing a role which he's qualified for so it shouldn't be a problem i mean his words one or two members of my family <laughs> it is a problem because one you cannot control him mm -hmm. if he does anything wrong or he decides to do anything wrong it's very difficult for you to to restrain him being your cousin and close relative. That's one. Yes, raising funds, we don't mind. That, that's okay. But there are certain key positions. And some of these things have come up already. I think the finance minister has been investigated for certain things already, although he was exonerated to some extent. But you just see that for you, it even makes your work very difficult. Can you imagine your, the, 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 the daughter, the, the mother of your daughter that has been given a public position doing something wrong? How are you going to call that person to order? Your cousin who is always going around with you, doing something wrong, how are you going to caution that person? So even if the fellow doesn't do anything wrong, the public, the Ghanaian, the electoral see it as a potential mm. uh, conflict of interest situation. But in this situation, they're going beyond that. They've done certain things that we're just keeping quiet about. You talk and they, they use the excuse, he or she is qualified for that position. And because of that alone, it's okay to have 10 qualified members of your family, to have 20 qualified members of your family in government. Because they're the only qualified people in this country. They're the people you trust, and they're the people that are very reliable. But, 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 that, but, that would have been good for a family business, but not for the mm -hmm. running of a country. Mm. But, but there are international best practices we look up to. I mean, as a country, we look up to countries like the United States of America. And it would take U.S., for example, President Donald Trump has his daughter, uh, Ivanka Trump, as a senior uh, White House official. And his son-in-law, who is uh, Jared Kushner, is also a senior advisor. So we don't see anything wrong with that. And we see something wrong with ours? You see, Trump is an outlier case. I'm sorry to say this. He's an outlier case <laughs> that has decided to use the democracy to his, his personal advantage. And that is not something that we should look at as international best practice. I wouldn't see that as international best practice. But again, for them, 
there's a bit of transparency, there's a bit of accountability, or there's some transparency and accountability that people can use to hold him and his family members if they do something wrong. Unfortunately, in our system, it's not that easy mm. to use uh, to, to hold people, close relatives of the president, to account if they do something wrong or if they are suspected of done something wrong. We've seen cases where they have been investigations, and we haven't even seen the the, 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 the reports of those investigations, and no action has been taken. But in America, we've seen people, the president's close is that are being being investigated and prosecuted. So there is a difference there. I wouldn't even call Trump's action as international best practice. I don't think so. Mm. Uh, Ms. Azim, I'll come back to you to, uh, for you to help us answer the question of how uh, this encourages corruption in any way. But let me get to you, uh, Bobby Bansing. Uh, we've already spoken about the legal dimensions and what's wrong and what's, what's not right, in the, what's wrong and what's right in the context of this. And the U.S. example that we gave, uh, Mr. Vice Mr. Azim uh, says that there are transparency systems in the U.S., blah, blah, blah. But the U.S. case is not an international best practice. But you are a lawyer. How do we draw the line between uh, what is right and what is wrong when it comes to conflict of interest situations like that? I, 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 I think you know, going back to the president's speech, it's, I don't think that that was a good example. Because when Mr. Foriata was raising funds for the party, he was not in public office. Now he has come into public office. So we have every right to question what he's done and whether or not you know, mm. it's been said. And that was subject matter of an investigation. You know, he was owned, like he said himself, he was raising funds. He owns a bank. You've put him to head an institution that regulates banks in that sector. And so any neutral person sitting outside has the reason to suspect that there will be a possibility of conflict mm. of interest. And like I said, the test is not whether or not there has actually been a conflict of interest. It is the likelihood, and that is what the Constitution says. Or that it appears it to appears be a conflict of interest that there interest should be situation. a conflict of interest. And so in, and, and I agree completely with Mr. Azim that we cannot use what is happening now in America as the international best practice. Because it's not. It's not. Because there, there, I think there was a country in South America where the president and his wife were president and vice pre mm. president respectively, and yeah. there were issues like that. So, yes, it, it does not represent international best practices. I think the test, like I said, is whether or not other people in, on that same standard were given the opportunity or should have been given the opportunity to do that. Nobody expects a president to come to office and then appoint his enemies into office. Yeah. Nobody expects that you will appoint people who are not aligned to your vision into office. That is why we would continue to respect somebody like President Kufo. He appointed people who did not belong to his party into political office. And you would see that it resulted in a lot of backlash from the beginning. But at the end of the day, these people brought a lot of things that he saw he could not have that quality, that expertise from... So you, your, your, view, your view is that there should be a transparent system of meritocracy so and that when people who are appointed public merit it and then there, there's enough transparency. But let's uh, quickly go back and hear uh, the finance minister himself who, uh, although he spoke in Chi, I will try as much as possible to summarize what he said in Chi. Although he spoke in Chi, gave examples of governments in Ghana who have had family members uh, actively in government business. Let's listen to him. Government, na ne mam yelu na ba kokra ya Minister of Finance, ba kye kop na ba kye local government, busi an suba ya ba wili aye ni na ya don ye onusu na o government num ena mi Papa Jones onusu na o finance ena kufu government and so se busi ya ne kufu adu ya President wum ena mi a mi yirimpo. And so, and a couple of government is so, and the Onoa president, and a minister of finance minister. And two to me who say, when you are Mr. Bibiswa, and yes, say, and nepotism, my baby, Onoa Shishemra, say, Pepper. Right, uh, very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, our masks don't show us smiling, but I'm smiling, absolutely. And 
he makes mention of uh, Nkrumah's government and then Buzia's government and traces it to Kufour's regime and even mentions that uh, even he himself, his own wife, Mia Amiri, you know, and uh, Nyamishrawa, if God blesses you then. Uh, so, so they see this as blessings, really. I mean, if you have a fine family, I mean, I don't have a fine family. <laughs> My family are cocoa farmers and uh, fishmongers and all of that, but we don't get the chance to form an executive. So if my brother, for example, was a finance minister, I don't have a chance to uh, be an aide or something. That will be wrong. You know, nobody is discounting the fact that if God blesses you, you would have some of these opportunities. But going on that, on that tangent, like I keep saying, the question is whether or not you be... So let's put it right. Let's, let's, let's put it in mm -hmm. context. It's wrong to even give these uh, explanations. Well, I, I think, I think it's, it's, it rather downplays the effect mm. of what we and are trivializes talking about. It trivializes case. it. Mm. Because like I said, if you are put in a situation where your personal interest, and it need not be financial benefit, mm. it need not be financial benefit. Like Mr. Axim said, how would you call your, um, the mother of your daughter to order when she does something that is contrary to public interest? Mm. How will you call your cousin to order when he does something that is contrary to public interest, especially when you have said that this is the person who raised the funds for you to run your campaign and become a president. And so you see that at every point in time, the interest of the public would be subjected to whatever personal interest yes. that you may yes. have. And to follow that trend, the same Bible says that you cannot, God, you cannot serve God and mammon. Mm. You have to choose one. Mm. So you cannot have two masters. If you are made the minister for finance, and we are not picking on him as an example, just yeah, yeah. I mean in particular, mm -hmm. just as an example, your foremost interest should be your allegiance should be first to the government, to 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 the constitution of Ghana, then to the Ghanaian people, as it were, before your party interest comes into play. So if you are put in a situation where, from your previous dealings, people have every cause to suspect that your decisions will not have the public interest at heart first then it's, it's, it's not a basis for noise. You don't call these questions as noise. Neither do you see because you have been blessed. Mm -hmm. I don't think that he's suggesting that people who do not come from those privileged lineages are not blessed. Are not blessed. Or would never be would blessed. Would never be blessed. I don't think that is what he's, he sought to say. But these are very vital questions that we, we need to ask. Particularly in the, to ask. in the context of the current transaction that um, is it's happening. And how so people. let me go to Ms. Azim. Vice Mr. Azim. Uh, let's talk about corruption now because this appears to be at the heart of all of these issues of transparency, uh, conflict of interest. How do these situations encourage corruption in governments? Uh, let me just start by saying that this government should not always be referring to other governments that have done certain things in the past mm -hmm. because they promised Ghanaians change. Mm -hmm. That was the president's message to Ghanaians, change. And so we don't expect to go back 10 years ago and do the things that we're doing that were wrong. So that is not an explanation. Now, with regards to corruption, he was a fundraiser. And we've seen fundraisers or funders that have been sent to court over certain malpractices. <laughs> is it not likely? that the opposition or other people will see whatever financial decisions it takes as also geared towards raising funds for the party campaign? Mm -hmm. Will it be wrong? Is it not a reasonable conclusion to decide that some of the things that he may be involved in doing are geared towards raising funds for the, for the campaign? So these are the issues that we talk about. And when we say corruption, because you are in a certain position, you are controlling the state's finances you are in a position to do certain things that will favor you, your family, or the, your political party. Even your business. So these are the things that you are using your position or likely to use your position for your personal gain. And personal gain includes all those things that I've mentioned, yourself, your finance, I mean your, your family, your business, and even your political party. That is the basic thing. The changes of the appointments that you preside over or advise the president on. You cannot say that you did not have your party in mind when you were making those changes or advising of those changes. The laws that you sent to parliament for approval, financial laws, taxes, and all those things, you cannot say that you were not influenced by your partisan interests. 
or even your personal interest or interest of your family. Mm. So these are the issues that give, make, give us worry that you were there, you, you are there. You see, when you yourself say that when you are blessed, the thinking is already wrong. <laughs> that you are blessed to be appointed to a certain position. So you must take advantage of it. Is that why you come to us asking us to vote for you? Or because you have the international interest at heart? But as I said, we're still... We still... You ask me whether it is possible mm. for us to overcome it. Yes. I said that if your thinking is already in that line, that you are blessed to occupy a certain position, definitely, how can you address mm. uh, tribalism or whatever? Or nepotism? Mr. I, I, I still you wanted us to... I still wanted us to... I still wanted us to establish uh, how all of this uh, could link to corruption because uh, when Bobby Vansing was speaking, Bobby Vansing raised the issue of uh, systems, laws, made references to the constitution. So I'm saying that if these family members are in the position of doing government business and yet these businesses are done in transparent regulation of existing laws and accountability, and everything is clean, should we still have a problem? We should not have a problem. But we're saying that it's not possible for you to ensure that, mm -hmm. to ensure transparency, to ensure that things are done in a clear mm -hmm. light. Mm -hmm. Because you are occupying a certain enviable position to which most people will not have a chance to talk. Just look at what happened this week. You shut down the banks. There are already views about why some of these banks were closed. I, you say that you, the finance minister, did not have a hand in getting some of those banks' licenses revoked. Then people come to demonstrate, and you unleash, you unleash the police to beat them because they want their money. People are on pension. They want their money. Why should the case take so long in court, yet it yet just started in July? Are you saying that you cannot influence the people that have taken decisions on these cases. And if you can influence, that is the corruption. You are using your position for personal partisan interest to benefit the family, to benefit the tribe, or whatever. Those are the issues that went travel and ethnicism itself, nepotism itself is, is corruption. So when you are saying that how do this influence corruption? It is already a corrupt act in itself. <laughs> I can I can understand that. So so how do we deal with it? Uh, my final question to you uh, before we wrap up: How do we deal with it? Because the president and uh, the Kenneth Forata have both made references to governments in Ghana in the past, tracing all the way from uh, Nkrumah to Kufo to Nana Kufuado. It means that this is something that exists within our body politic. How do we? deal with it once and for all so that when people are elected into office they don't initially start thinking about their family members who are qualified to fill positions well i think i think one of the, the things things to do is what we're doing now we must make it clear that it is wrong it is not patriotic to do these things if you have one or two family members fine but when they are up to 10, 20, 30, <laughs> and everybody's talking about it, you should feel a bit worried that this is happening. So that's the first thing, the public education, sensitizing people, leaders, mm. to understand that, yes, they, what we are doing is wrong. After all, these people, some of them were occupying very enviable positions elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Some of them were in private business. Mm -hmm. Why must they come into politics? Do they need to survive by coming into politics or public positions? If they were so qualified so that is the public education then the laws unfortunately the laws it will be difficult to come and come out with laws that will say that you cannot bring your, your brother or sister into government because in the first place who is even going to send that bill to parliament <laughs> it is the people that are benefiting from the present system and then when you go to parliament and you have 169 members of your party being being in parliament as against a smaller number. Everything that they bring, the executive bring, not only on this government, but all the previous governments, any virtual every bill that is brought to parliament, including nominations of people for certain, certain key policies, 
that they're supposed to vet them very seriously, they, get, they go through. Right. Uh, Mr. So Mr. the law will be a problem. Right. Mr. Azim, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely uh, for uh, speaking with us. Uh, Vitus Azim is an anti-corruption campaigner. He's a former executive director of the Ghana Integrity Initiative.